Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to another China phone tutorial. Now a lot of people have issues with routing their MTK based China phones, especially the MTK 6592 Octoka users. And today in this tutorial, I want to show you how to route every MTK based China phone to 100% and install CWM recovery in it. I am doing this on my new iNU V8 from Coolicool.com. It got the new Hexacore MTK 6591 SoC and it also works on this one without a problem. And all you need for that is just a computer, your smartphone and a USB cable. So pretty easy. And now enough of talking and let's directly get started with the tutorial. Now first of all, you have to enable USB debugging mode on the smartphone because we have to connect it to the computer using ADB. So go to system settings and then scroll down until you can see develop options. If you cannot see develop options, scroll down until you can see about the phone and now tap 7 times at build number. Then you will see you are now a developer. And now you can go back to settings and access the developer options. And at developer options you have to enable USB debugging. You will find it somewhere right over here. And then you just have to make sure that the box is ticked. So if the box is not ticked, be sure that it is ticked and then you're ready to go. And now it's time to go to the computer and download all the necessary files which we need. So we'll need the PDA net drivers. Those are really important because those are the ADB drivers and those are needed to communicate with the phone. And then you will also need the flashing package. You will find all the links here down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. And in the flashing package, you will find some important things like MTK Droid tools and SP Flash tool. Now, first of all, you have to install the PDANet ADB drivers. So just do a right click on the installer and choose run as administrator. And then just follow the steps in the setup until the installation has completed. When you have done that, it is time to connect the smartphone to the computer using USB debugging. And you have to make sure that your smartphone is turned on and that USB debugging mode is enabled. And then just connect it with the USB cable to your computer. And also be sure to connect it as MTP device and not charge only or something, because otherwise ADB mode is maybe not working. And after you have connected your smartphone, you should check out your device manager, which you can find on the start control panel system device manager and here see if your smartphone gets detected correctly so search for something like adb android bridge interface or maybe yun os as you can see right over here and yun os is some kind of a universal driver for a lot of china phones and if you can see that or android adb interface or something then your smartphone is in adb mode and connected to the computer and now it's time to run MTK Droid tools, which you can find in the flash package, which you can find down below in the description on chinadevices.com. So be sure to run MTK Droid tools.exe, which has this Android icon here as administrator. So right click it and go to run as administrator. And now just wait until the tool has loaded up. This can take up to 30 seconds. So just be patient and wait for it. And when you can see this screen here, just wait a few more seconds and then you can see your phone information. And it's really important because you can see your chip, you can see your model number, Android version, email number. So it will be good to take a screenshot of this. Also at the left bottom corner you can see if your phone is rooted. If it's blue or yellow it's not rooted, if it's green it is rooted. Then you can see here at the right screen if your phone has fake information, if it's spoofed or something or if it has UBIFS file system. And if you got that please don't continue with this tutorial because you will break your smartphone. But anyway now we have to create a scatter file that's why we click at blocks map. And this opens up this blocks map here. So that's pretty important because here you can see all the files and images which are in your ROM. And we have to back up some of them. That is called reading back the ROM. And now we have to read back at least until recovery to create a custom recovery. So we have to read back from preloader until recovery. But in this tutorial we will read back the whole ROM because then you also got a backup and it's pretty good because if anything goes wrong, you can flash that back up to your smartphone. Now, that is why we will read back from preloader until cache. And cache and user data is not needed, so you will get preloader until Android. And now we have to note down the scatter address of cache. So therefore, we open up a new text document. So just place it on your desktop, do a right click and open up a new text document. And now carefully note down the scatter address of the cache block. So you can find that in the second column where you can also find cache. So it must be in the same row like cache, but in the second column on the scatter. And just note that down and go to save. 
And basically now we're done, we just have to create now the scatter file. So just click that button here and then place the scatter file on your desktop and hit the save button. What you should now get here is a scatter file. And now we don't need MTK Droid tools anymore, so we can close that. And on your desktop, you should have the MTK, whatever is it called, scatter file for your smartphone. Okay, that was the first step, creating the scatter file. And now it's time to read back the ROM using SP Flash tools. And now you have to bring your phone in preloader mode. That means disconnect it from your computer, open up the back cover and remove the battery. On devices which don't have a removable battery, just make sure you hold the volume up button while connecting it or press the little reset button which you can normally find between the volume rockers. Okay, then go to your device manager and in the device manager after you have connected the phone as I said before, you should see a new device popping up under ports and this should be called MediaTek or MTK Preloader. It's completely normal that it disappears after 2 or 3 seconds so you don't have to worry about that. And you just have to worry about that if it doesn't get detected, then you have to try to reconnect it, try holding the volume up button while connecting it, or try to press the reset button if you have non-removable battery. And if it has a yellow triangle, that means the driver is not installed. Then you have to be really fast when it gets detected, do a red click on it and go to update driver software and point manually to the driver file, which you can also find down below in the description. Okay, when it gets properly detected, you have to start SP Flash Tool, the latest version, which is 5.1. Download link also down below in the description. And then go to flashtool.exe, do a right click on it and go to run as administrator. That's really important. Okay, when you're in the SP Flash Tool, you have to load the scatter, which we have created before. That's why you have to go to scatter loading right over here. And now you point to the scatter file, which we have created before. Be sure it's the correct one, which should be on your desktop, if you have done it the same way like I do. Okay, now you have to go here from download to the readback tab. That's also really important. And here in the readback tab, you have to go to add. And now you should see here a new entry. And what you have to do now is double click it. So just click here at the file path. And the tool will now ask you where you want to save the file, which we'll create right now. So just choose the desktop and press OK. Then you will see this screen here. And here you have to make sure that hex is ticked and not decimal. That's really important, so please choose hex. And here you can choose whatever you want to, so choose eMMC user. And the start address has to be zero. So make sure it says everywhere here zero and nothing else. And now we have to insert for length the value which we have copied before. So open your text document on your desktop and take that value and insert it. But you have to be careful. So you have to insert it from the back. And the address which we have copied before is too long, so you can enter here eight numbers. And we have copied 10 numbers. So what you have to do now is start filling it up from the back. So you start at the right side and you go to the left side. So you start with five zeros here, and then you just have those three numbers or letters. And basically that's it. You don't need the two zeros here at the beginning. And you can easily check if you have filled in the correct numbers, if you can find that in your scatter file. So open your scatter file with a text editor and you should find exactly that number and then it's correct. So press the OK button after that. And now it's time to connect the phone in preloader mode. But before we do that, we have to click the read back button. And now just connect the phone to the computer in preloader mode. So just as you did before in the device manager. And then it should start to read back the ROM. You should see first the red bar, and the red bar should be followed by a blue bar which starts to fill up. And this process can take up to 30 minutes. So this really takes a lot of time. You can see it is copying with one megabyte per second. And the ROM could be, I don't know, one or 1.2 gigabytes. So as you can see, it can take a lot of time. So just be patient, don't touch your phone, don't disconnect it. And yeah, just don't remove the USB cable, don't touch it, and don't shut down your PC, and everything will be good. And after the readback process is completed, you will see a green circle. That means everything was successful, and then you can close the SP Flash tool, remove your phone, reinsert the battery, and it should still boot. And now I will do a little cut, because this takes really fucking long. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after the readback was successful, you should find ROM underline zero on your desktop or where you have saved it, okay? And basically that contains everything from your ROM, like all the images. And we now have to extract that with MTK Droid tools. 
That's why you have to reconnect your phone to the computer using ADB, because otherwise MTK Droid Tools doesn't work. So make sure your phone is connected. And then you just open up MTK Droid Tools again, be sure to run it as administrator. So just wait until it has loaded up. It will take a few seconds again. So let's just wait. And now once again you should see your phone information, but still nothing has changed and you don't have root access. But anyway, we will go to the second tab which has root, backup and recovery and click it to process ROM file from flash tool. And now you have to open up your ROM file from the readback process. And as you can see, it starts to extract all the images. And when you come to the boot image, it will ask you if you want to uh, make CWM recovery automatically. And here just press yes, because this creates a CWM recovery image for your smartphone. And that's completely automatically, so you don't have to do anything. Just wait until it says task is complete. And now I want to show you where to find that recovery, because we have to flash that with the SP flash tool to our smartphone. So open up your MTK Droid Tools folder and find your backup folder, which should be in the folder. And then you should find another folder which is called like your smartphone and like for flash tool from readback or something. And in there you should find your backup and all your system images. Okay, now drag and drop that to your desktop because we will need that in a second. And now once again you have to open up SP flash tool so be sure it's the latest version which is 5.1 and run it as administrator. When it has opened up, you have to go to the download tab. And here you have to load your scatter once again, so just choose the same scatter file as you did for the readback. And now you should be in the download tab, and here you have to choose recovery. So make sure nothing except recovery is ticked. And the path will be empty. Now you have to click at the path and point to the path of your recovery. So go to the folder which contains your backup. And in this folder, be sure to choose the modded recovery and not the factory non-modified recovery. So take that with just say your model number and recovery and go to open. Um, I will later also tell you something about the boot patched, but now you won't need it. So you will just need the boot patched if the recovery is not booting. Then you should try to flash the boot image too. But please just flash the boot image if your recovery is not booting, because if the boot image is messed up, then maybe your phone doesn't boot anymore. So just do that if the recovery doesn't work. And what you should try first is flash the recovery only. Now make sure it is ticked and the path is correct and then hit download or F9 on your keyboard. And now connect your smartphone like you did before for the readback, so without battery or with the reset button. And yeah, now you should see a red bar which is followed by a yellow bar, which will just take a few seconds to flash it because the recovery is really small. And then you should see this green circle here which is ticked and that means everything was successful and you can now disconnect your phone and close SP Flash Tool. Okay, so we're now done here and you should now have CWM on your smartphone. So let's go to the smartphone and let's see if we can boot the recovery because we will need that. Okay, we're now on the smartphone and it is turned off and now it's time to boot CWM. So to start CWM recovery, you have to press volume up and power. That's the default combination. Maybe on some phone it is messed up and you have to press, I don't know, power and volume down, so you have to try that. And when you can see the boot logo animation, just stop and release your fingers and then it should boot CWM. Maybe you have to keep holding that, so that really depends on the smartphone, but here on the iNeo V8 you just have to stop and release the fingers and boom, after a few seconds you're on CWM. Okay, so you now have a custom recovery on your smartphone, but now it's time to root the smartphone. So let's go back to the computer and let's do the last steps to root this baby. Okay guys, we're now on the computer and now it's time to connect the smartphone to the computer as USB storage, so that you're able to copy stuff onto it. And then you download SuperSU, so you can find the latest download down below in the description, so just click at the link. And then download the SuperSU zip, the latest version is currently 2.0.2. Okay, so let's just download that, so save it. And then you go to your computer and make sure your phone is connected as USB storage. And then you should see your storage here. And if you don't have an SD card, just copy that into your Intel memory. And if you have an SD card, copy it to your SD card. So that's what I will do right now. Just copy that to the root of your SD card, okay? So there we go. Here is the zip. 
Okay, so now it's on the phone and now you can turn off your phone and boot CWM. Okay guys, we're now in CWM and now it's time to install SuperSU. So use your volume rockers to navigate here through the menu and choose install SIP from SD card. And here you have to choose SIP from SD card and now just choose the update SuperSU SIP. It's here at the bottom and then just hit the power button to accept and here you have to go to yes and hit the power button to accept once again. Okay, so now it should install SuperSU. As you can see, install from SD card complete. That means it was successful. And now you can go to go back and then reboot your system by pressing the power button. And now let's see if we have root access on the iNew V8. And a good app to check if you got root access is root checker basic from the Google Play Store. So just download and install it, then open it up and tap at verify root. And if everything was successful, you should get a super user request and you have to grant that. And if you can do that, you should get congratulations, your device has root access. So now you have successfully rooted your China phone. Congratulations. Okay, basically that's it. Your phone is now rooted and you're ready to go for custom ROMs, to back up your ROM and to play around with your smartphone without any restrictions. Okay guys, so I hope this tutorial was helpful and if it was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe and don't forget to visit chinadevices.com and be a part of our awesome community. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.